we've got three rings, right? And just to clarify, none of those rings are with Colin Is right? Is Frazier Minton going to have more points than Sapkowski this year? Frazier Minton sucks at hockey. This guy might not even be an NHLer, so we got to settle down on that one. I laid no. Minus 160 on will they show her holding a drink in her hand. They are two points behind the St. Louis Blues in the wild card, and they are... Oh, the Blues are dog water. The Blues suck. And the Blues like, are oh. the worst of those four teams <laughs> that I mentioned by a mile. And that's they're my they're not a good hockey team. Care, like have some set of balls, have some response, have some pride for what the hell goes on on the ice. It's so absurd. I'm looking forward to the parade, uh, but that's going to be later in the year. See, I'd rather have so money in there than have Arvid Soda balls. I would rather stack a bunch of garbage that I have in the corner of my room over here than have Arvid Soda balls in that. He's a- March 28th, welcome back to Edgework presented by Stacks. I'm Zach Phillips, joined here on this Thursday morning by the cleanup crew, Rusty Bill, as well as so many sports. will help break down all the games for today, give out our best bets, look ahead a little bit to this weekend, only one game there tomorrow as well. So looking ahead to all of that, answering questions in the chat. But before we can get to anything, I want to remind people, if you haven't already, you should be signed up at the Stacks Betting Exchange. If you're sick of getting limited and profiled, Stacks is a unique sports betting exchange that offers higher limits and better pricing. Stacks offers a fair and real time marketplace for users to bet on the outcome of sporting events, offering better odds in a peer to peer marketplace. Stacks is the best option for anyone who wants to wager on live sports. So make sure to add Stacks to your list of outs and sign up today. If you can get commission-free trading when you sign up now, the option is yours at Stacks. Yesterday, good day for us uh, on the show. We go one and one. We win Albers bets. We lose Robs, but we took a half or a point four unit swing on uh, Brad Marsh on anytime goal score, so that one loses. But we do come away positive on the night there as well, bring us to three sixteen. 331 and 12 on the season. That's 659 bets. We got a 2.6% ROI and we are up 17 units. So money, how are you feeling on this Thursday? Ready to get things back together? You know, we had a we had a rough day for the cleanup crew last Thursday. Yeah, that was just an aberration though. Um way to go. Let's uh let's rock and roll. <laughs> All right. And uh Russ. Now uh, heading towards golf season, things are get weather's getting better here. We got March Madness kind of midway through NHL season gearing up for the playoffs. How are you feeling about everything going on right now? Yeah, it's a great time of year. Um, you know, Abs are playing very well hockey right now at the right time. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, as so many said last week was a was a fluke. You know, I, I uh, it was it was definitely my worst worst week of the season on the show. So I expect we bounce back uh, bounce back well today. So. Yeah, I'm ready. Right. Right. Well, let's do that. Let's start with the games we got here tonight. And we'll start with the Leafs Capitals game where the Leafs are hosting Washington. We got Toronto minus 164, uh, the Caps plus 158, and a total of six and a half right across the board. And Russ, we'll go right to you first and foremost. You do have a bet for us here tonight. Yeah, let's uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and lock in over six and a half. Looks like the uh, market is moving a little bit against me. Um, yep, very happy to take that plus 104 at FanDuel. I think that's a fantastic price. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, we we have played a lot of caps overs in the last few weeks. Um, did pretty well with them. Then they got some pretty decent goaltending and some good defense in the last week or so. And they've kind of slowed down a little bit, but I think this is a good spot to, uh, to target the over six and a half against a very, very high-flying Leafs offense. Um, you know, if you've listened to the show the last few weeks, this uh, this Caps team over in four of their last five games, they're six and one in their last seven. I expect this to be a very, very close game and a very, very <clears throat> high event game. Um, and then on the other side of the ice, Toronto is actually playing very, very high event hockey and uh, getting kind of middling goaltending over in six of the last seven for the Leaves. Um, one thing that does concern me a little bit is Charlie Lindgren's play. Lindgren has been playing very, very well lately. But if you look at that game last week against Toronto, he gave up seven, and that game ended up being 7-3. So um, there might be something against this Leafs team. And, you know, Leafs are not scared to put pucks on the net and generate tons of scoring chances. So I think this is a, a good spot to uh, to target over six and a half. My numbers have north of seven here. And uh, at plus 104, Plus one hundred, I think that's a great, a great bet. So, yep, I think the over six and a half is a is a good way to start the show. 
We'll grab a plus 102 there. It is available at Stacks and did quickly move off the screen as we were going to get the uh, plus 104. So plus 102 and you can find plus money pretty much everywhere. Russ, I feel like potentially there, uh, one of the reasons it might have been moving against you is because it was just reported kind of right before we went on the show that uh, Austin Matthews was not on the ace at morning skate. Uh, Bertuzzi, Domi was playing <coughs> at center there, Marner on the wing, but... Uh, I'm also just seeing here, by the way, because a wit is being asked in the question in the chat. Mike is Matthews playing tonight? Uh, Toronto beat reporters suggesting that Austin Matthews is likely to play, especially with Marner on that top line right wing. Uh, he is not going to play tonight. He's not going to play on Saturday, so Matthews is likely to play there. So I wouldn't be worried about that if this is something that is other people are factoring into tonight's handicap. Um, so money, do you have any thoughts on this game tonight between the Capitals and the Leafs, aside from the fact that uh, a win for the Caps would bode well for Spencer Carberry bets? <laughs> yeah, I'm um, I'm seeing the market uh, react right now to um, to the Austin Matthews potential news here. Um, like you said, he should be playing, but um, it's it's creating value now on this uh, on on this over. My concern about the over though is that these teams played. Um, last week, I guess, in the 7-3 game, um, it was actually a pretty low event game, right? The score, final score was 7-3, but that's not the way that that game should have gone. We had Lindgren play um, one of his worst games of the season, and um, he's shown that, like, that's that that was an, that was an anomaly for him. So um, it does concern me a bit. Um, I don't... I'll probably end up passing, but... Um, but but I do like the overlook. I just have some I just have some reservations with the way that with the way that these two these two teams played each other. And recently. for those those people looking at uh, odd screens and stuff right now, as I'm sure Russ and someone here are also tracking, you can find a couple more plus money uh, numbers coming up on the over six and a half. At least it's showing on the bet same screen right now, and <clears throat> likely a lot of that with uh, with the reaction to the Matthews news there. But it does look like he will be playing so. There you go. First bet of the day, locked in over six and a half. We grabbed plus 102 in that game between Washington and Toronto. We'll recap everything at the very end. If you do miss bets, if you join partway through, how, whatever it is, we'll recap it all. If you also want to see our bets, you can head over to the Bet Stamp app in the Find Better section as Edgework HQ. But keep it moving here tonight, gentlemen. We do have more games on the schedule. We got more games that we've got bets in, and one of those would be this Columbus Pittsburgh game where we're seeing the Penguins right now minus 223 best price available is at stacks the uh, Blue Jackets plus 198 on the other side and a total of six and a half pretty much across the board here right now and Russ you've got another bet for us yep we're gonna go back to the well here with uh with Pittsburgh overs um over six and a half <clears throat> right at minus 115, I think is a good price. I probably wouldn't play it too much higher than that. Probably go up to minus 120, which is, it looks like those minus 115s are widely available. But this is one that is, yeah. uh, the market is in agreement with me here. It's sort of trending up. So I would get that locked in right away. That other uh, that other over, you could probably wait on to see what, what transpires. But this one I would lock in. It does look like it's moving up. And, uh, you know, for good reason. This is two of the worst defensive teams in the league right now. I wanted to play Pittsburgh overs kind of all year. Uh, my numbers have their offense very, very highly ranked. And uh, the last week or so, it's really agreed with me. Um, Pittsburgh's gone over in five of their last seven. Um, but, yeah, on the flip side, they are 30th in expected goals allowed over the last month. And uh, the Blue Jackets just can't stop anybody. They're getting decent goaltending from Tarasov, but they're still 32nd in expected goals allowed. So you can't expect him to, uh, you know, to stop everything, especially against the Pittsburgh team that's seventh in expected goals for. So very, very good offense for Pittsburgh. Very bad defense. Um, like I said, they've gone. The Pens have gone over in five of their last seven. And we look at the Blue Jackets games. They've allowed six goals, four goals, six, four, and six their last five games. So, um, you know, they should be due to allow anywhere between four and six goals tonight, I think is a very, very reasonable. Um, so, like I said, over six and a half, I'd probably lock it in at minus 115. I think anything over that is a little bit uh, less value. I do have this number coming in right around seven. So I think, you know, get it locked in before it moves up to minus 120 or minus 125. But that's the way we're going for, yeah, the second bet over six and a half in the in the Pens jackets. 
And talking about six and a halfs being available across the board, that minus 115 is pretty much the number that we're seeing for every book that's being posted right now uh, across on the over six and a half. So if you're watching, you should be able to get that over six and a half minus 115. We grab a minus 114 that is best price available. Try to get the best price, but minus 114, minus 115 out there. Uh, so money, where do you come in on this game tonight and thoughts on kind of where we're at with our first best bet in this one? Or our second best bet of the day, first best bet of this game. I I agree with you over. I think that um both um Columbus and Pittsburgh, they're still they're still giving up tons, right? And um even in that Carolina game that Pittsburgh won four one, um, it took um it it took a very good performance by by uh, by Nadelkovich to keep that game under. Um so um and Pittsburgh still still gave up a ton in that game as well. So I think that the way that both teams are giving up chances, we know that Columbus just um it's it's tough to know what you what you get out of Columbus, but one thing that has been consistent is that they will give up chances, right? So and uh, when you're looking at at a total, um all you can do is kind of look at who's going to be giving up chances and who's going to be suppressing the chances. And neither of these teams are capable of suppressing any high quality chances. So we'll, so, so we'll, so we'll get our shots in this game. And um, I do, th and I think that the over is going to take a, uh, is going to take substantial amount of more, more money as we go throughout the day here. There you go. Two best bets to start. Two games were through and two games that so money is in support of the bet. So uh, I think that bodes well for the Thursday show, the confidence wise between you two gentlemen on the in the cleanup crew here. And next one, I mean, we we flirted with the idea of best bet, uh, double best bets because we went two from Russ. So money said, yep, I like it. Yep, I like it. But this next one, we do have a double best bet and so money. We're looking at the Vegas Golden Knights Winnipeg Jets game here. Winnipeg minus 124, Vegas plus 112 there at stacks. Total of five and a half all the way across the board here right now. What do we got for our uh, double best bet tonight, so money? So this is more of a fade on the Jets as we as we continue to keep fading the Jets here. We've, we've touched on this, um, I think, for two or three weeks now where I did feel that the Jets were about to go into the tank. Um, nothing has changed. Um, that was the reason why... I felt that there was value in a uh, Bobrovsky Vesna ticket as well, right? So um, the Jets are playing the way that we thought they would play. Um, they are they're back to giving up um, tons of scoring chances. Um, Goaltending has been has been a little iffy lately, right? And they're not generating as much as as they were. Now we we do have to keep in mind that they have been didn't have been dealing with with a uh, with with injuries as well, but that's all part of the handicap, right? Vegas, um, Vegas is a, is a is a tough team, right? Like I've I've been giving them benefit of the doubt all all season, um, until they show me that they're not capable of putting up a performance um, in a game that they need to win. So um, I do think that um, there th there is some narratives here. I think after that blown lead against Nashville. Um, the stuff coming out of the locker room was that we got to tighten it up, right? So, and um, when when Vegas has has success, um, they do it starting from the back end, right? So if if they are going to be st um, tightening it up um, against the Winnipeg team that is um, not not generating as much lately, then I don't think that bodes well for the Jets here. So um, I did play the uh, I I did play Vegas here, and I've got it. Yeah, pretty much anything plus plus money. I'm on. Uh, I'm I'm on Vegas. Oh, there you go. And we're getting plus one tens, plus one twelves. We'll lock it in plus one twelve. Uh, thanks to our friends over at Stacks. Uh, so there you go. Another best bet. And Russ, why don't you explain to us why we have a double best bet here tonight? <clears throat> yeah, I agree with pretty much everything. So money said. Um, yeah, just to put a little bit of a bow on some of the things that he. Um, alluded to, you know, that he did say the Jets are leaking on defense, dropped all the way down to 19th and expected goals for. And then, you know, that's not just even close to what they're doing on offense, which they can't generate basically anything. And 25th and expected goals for. Uh, these are two teams that uh, are sort of going the opposite directions for me. I've kind of been waiting for Vegas to put it all together. 
Um, you know, I think they played really, really good hockey two periods against the Predators last their last game. But that that third period, they just gave the Preds an inch and, and they took it. Um, but I think they are trending in the right direction. And some of these pieces that they got at the trade deadline are starting to fit in really well. And this is against a, a Jets team who, like I said, is going the opposite direction, I think, who's kind of learning what they are which is uh, kind of a middling playoff contender and, and probably not a cup contender. One and four in their last uh, five games for these Jets. And for some reason, the, the Knights play the Jets really, really well. Nine and one and zero in their last 10 games against Winnipeg are the, are the Knights. Um, so I would say that the only really edge here is probably the Jets in what the Jets have in goal. Hellebuck has been really good. E even recently, he's been playing very, very, very well. And uh, of course, we, we would love to see Aiden Hill here for the for the Knights, but he's out with an injury. So should be Logan Thompson, who's been serviceable. But, you know, aside from the the goaltenders, I don't see any edges that uh, that the Jets have here other than that, other than in the net and for that reason, I think that the plus 110s, plus 115s, you know, are a great price. I'd probably play it all the way down to plus money, like like so many said. You know, plus 105, probably stop around there, plus 100 maybe. But in my mind, this should probably be mi minus 110 both ways. That's sort of right ar around where my numbers have it. And uh, like I said, I, you know, I think uh, this Knights team is, is starting to gel at the right time. And um, this Jets team is starting to fall apart a little bit. There you go. Three best bets for tonight's games. Uh, looking at those, we do have a big schedule, a lot, a lot on on the schedule here tonight. So, gentlemen, I'll go to you and quickly ask: just if you're looking across at some of the rest of the games, um, obviously the cards that were submitted, that was all we had. That was all you were looking at prior to the show. But so, money has there been anything that's popped up since we started? Is there anything that you're going to be looking at throughout the rest of the day here that maybe you're waiting to get on? Are you waiting for news? Are you waiting for goalies? Or has anything else come up that you are ready to fire on right now? I'm looking at that uh, at that at that Flyers game. Um, they have been playing well, but I think that being favored like that on the road, um, it's probably a step too far. I do need a little bit more, so I'm not, I'm not ready to do it yet. But um, I think if the if, if the Habs get into the plus 140 range, um, I think that's the way that I'd be going. The other game, of course, is how can we have a show with me on without talking about the Canucks, right? So, um, so, so the other game is the uh, Dallas Canucks game. Um, it's a little bit of a Tough situation here for me personally because I do have yeah. um, I do have stars presidents uh, presidents trophy ticket, right? So um, I kind of need a stars win more than I need a Canucks win at this point. But I'm starting to get concerned about the Canucks division as well, and my my thoughts have changed in the sense that the West is so strong. I don't think from a playoff matchup standpoint. I don't think it matters where you where you finish. You're going to get a difficult opponent anyways. But because the Canucks have been leading the division for so long, um, if they end up blowing the division, I think that that might um, that might um, that might impact their psyche, right? And it and it takes me back to um, to that year that um, when the Canucks blew the division and Nasland uh, um, stood there after the game saying that we choked, right? Like. Um, I can see a repeat of that. So even though I don't think it's as important anymore from a matchup standpoint for the Canucks to win the division, um, I think that they kind of need to at this point. So it's a it's like it's a it's a tough game here for me. I think it's lined correctly. Dallas should be favored. Dallas is the better team than the Canucks right now. Um, so the so the side there is fair. Um, I'm kind of looking at the under there, but uh, for I'll, I'll I'll need a little bit more there. So so those two are the games that I'm the, the, that I'm looking at right now. And well, quickly here, so money while we're talking about uh, the Canucks, Charles asking in the in the chat here earlier, what's the level of concern or worry about Demko? So money <laughs> worse than Albert about playing the Leafs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, so no concern. Um, he's going to be back with about five games left in the season. Um, so he's going to get enough work in before the playoffs. 
In fact, I think that this injury, even though it's going to cost me a um, cost me the Vesna ticket on him, I think it's going to turn out to be a blessing in disguise, right? Like um, we saw this last year with Skinner, where they were trying to win the division and they ran the kid into the ground, right? Um, and then we saw that he just he was just out, out of gas in the in the in the in the second round there. So as this season was progressing, that was a concern of mine. Um, he was well on his way to to uh, 60 games and i think that's that's too much in today's nhl f- especially for a especially for a young goalie who's um who's um who has come into his own now so i do think it's going to be a blessing in disguise um for demko um he, we don't have to worry about him running out of gas in the playoffs and he's going to be back in time to to get some work in before the playoffs so um i think there's the there, there's no concern from that standpoint. Russ, is there anything else that you're looking at tonight that you haven't got there yet or that's popped up during the show? Yeah, just to touch on a couple of things that uh, that So Money brought up. Um, completely agree with everything you said about the Flyers game. I think that uh, this Montreal team has actually been playing pretty decent hockey the last uh, last two weeks or so. And, um, you know, the Flyers, we kind of they kind of know – you know, who they are, where they're going to be in the playoffs. I think that them laying minus 150 or minus 155 is a little bit egregious. So I do think that, you know, if I had to play a side, I, w- I would take Montreal in that. It's just a little bit more value on that Canadians. Um, like so many said, you would ideally want something closer to plus 135, plus 140. And it, it does seem like it is trending that direction. Um, I was looking at, you know, the Flyers all the way up to minus 155 earlier this morning, which – I thought was was insane. So I, I completely agree there, but it's just not quite enough for us to get involved. And um, then on this Dallas Vancouver game, um, of course, you know my numbers, of course, show show value on the stars. There's no, uh, you know, there's no doubt it's about a theme that. Russ. Pretty much how it's always been all season. Uh, but I'm going to continue to pass. I did look very very closely at this game and uh, this matchup, you know, I think this should be a very, very close game, very tight game. Something like an overtime bet would not be a bad look. It probably is, is priced down because, you know, it's, it's because of what the line is. And also something that kept me off of it is I would have liked to have uh, the stars at plus money yesterday. I think they were anywhere from plus one Oh five to, to even money yesterday. And now they're all the way up to minus minus one ten and minus one fifteen. So in my opinion, that, uh, that value is gone. And something that also gives me pause is, Jake Ottinger really has not looked good the last month or so. Um, you know, just letting in all kinds of uh, easy, easy goals all the way down to 67th and goals saved above expectation, which, you know, I'm not sure if that's um, just kind of uh, taking some time, days off to get ready for the playoffs or what it is. But that really has me concerned. Um, obviously, you avoid Demko here. You get to Smith in goal. The Smith has been serviceable. Obviously, he he's no Demko, but he has been pretty good. 32nd in goal saved above expectation. Um, so, no, I I really lean towards the Stars, but when you break it down, there's really not enough for me to get involved. This Canucks team has just been playing as good as they really have all season. I think the Stars are starting to figure it out and, and play well, 8-2 and two in their last 10. But there's too many variables, and it's just too tight for me to get involved, although I do lean towards the Stars here. Um, other than that, you know, I, I really don't – you know, I see a, a message in the chat about the Blackhawks money line. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad look at all. I think uh, you're getting the sends off of this massive game last night. Huge letdown spot. Should be Forsberg in net for them. And uh, this Blackhawks team has been playing pretty well. The, the number has been bouncing around. So I don't hate the uh, Blackhawks play at all here, which is, uh, you know, which is that's about as disgusting as I'll, I'll get all year. Um, but yeah, right around plus 160, plus 170, I think uh, Blackhawks are a decent look for sure. Do you want to play this year, Russ? <clears throat> no, I, I don't. No. I don't think, um, you know, um, <laughs> there's a small chance you could get Soderblom in net for, uh, yeah. for the Hawks. Um, you know, it, I, I, I'm fine to just pass on it, honestly. Uh, um, all right, there you go. So those are our picks locked in from the boys in the cleanup crew. Now, we're not going to mess with them and mess with their record, but we do have a guest pick for people. Uh, I've been sent this over uh, behind the scenes while we're on here. Uh, he could have just sent it in the chat, but um, he is active in there right now. Matt Albert, you can use the Rangers' Avs over as a guest pick. 
Uh, Streaky yeah. Igor is fighting in a bit right now, and Rangers still likely without three of their defense. Uh, just quickly pulling that up for people. Um, sorry, taking a second. There you go. That over and that one, over six and a half plus money, and you can find yeah. plus money pretty much across everywhere. Uh, I don't know if yeah. either of you guys have an opinion on this one, Russ. Yeah, I think that's that's a great look. You know, anytime you're going to get a, a, a abs over six and a half at plus money is definitely the way you should look. Honestly, this team should maybe be lined closer to seven on some of their games. And like Alvar said, he knows this Rangers team better than anybody. If they're going to have four defensemen out, you know, without Gustafsson. And uh, they've, they've really struggled a little on defense. And, you know, I broke down this Rangers team the last couple of weeks on this show and their lack of defense, but somehow always getting it done with Igor and Nett. So I agree. You know, I think it should be a pretty high flying game. Abs at home are just a, another beast altogether. So I think the abs could put up, put up three or four and you could get a three, three game in the third period. Um, so I have no issue locking that in. No issue locking it in. All right, there we go. Uh, over six and a half plus one Oh two will grab. So bonus pick as we're, uh, as we're about to head out the door there. Uh, another one added to the card as for the picks that we've given out today. If you want to track them all, you can head over to the bet stamp app in the find better section as Edgework HQ and see all of our picks from today throughout this week, from this season, you know, we get a, a winning day there yesterday, slight, but it doesn't matter. It's still a winning day. Help continue to contribute to our record, our ROI, all that stuff for this season. But as for our picks for today, we do have four on the card, you know, bigger slate, but we're going to pick quality over quantity here on this Thursday for the cleanup crew. So four best bets for tonight. We're going to first the Washington Toronto game. We're taking the over six and a half plus one Oh two there in Columbus, Pittsburgh over six and a half minus minus one fourteen. Vegas Golden Knights against the Winnipeg Jets money line plus one twelve. So that's the Vegas money line plus one twelve. And finally, the Rangers avalanche over six and a half plus 102. Those are our picks for today. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. We appreciate all the support. We appreciate everyone who watched, liked, subscribed, turned on notifications. Thank you to everyone who's listening on podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, review over there, all that good stuff. We appreciate you guys uh, hit, uh, continuing to show up here every day and continuing to help us make this show um and make this show a uh, a better thing to do and a, a fun thing to do for us on a daily basis so thank you very much we got one game on the schedule tomorrow but we will still be back here for a show breaking down uh tomorrow's nhl game uh and uh i'm not trying to give any any notice to luke there in the chat luke's a fool um <laughs> uh <laughs> but uh we will be back here tomorrow morning at 10 30 a.m eastern time Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. So money, Russ, thank you guys for taking the time to do this. The Thursday cleanup crew, tidy things up on this big slate as we head into our short, small Friday NHL slate. Well done. Well done to the NHL and the schedule makers there. But regardless, we make it work. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy the games tonight. And good luck on your bets.